What does it take for a Texas town to hit legendary status? Is it the natural landscape or the history? Is it the fact that it's the only place in the world to do something? Or that it's produced some of Texas's most legendary characters? Well, whatever it is, you can bet your britches this town has it. Say, friend, you Valdi? Cause I Valdi. Let's go Valdi together. <laughs> All right. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. About 90 miles west of San Antonio, you'll find the city of Uvalde. It's the county seat of Uvalde County and rich in Texas heritage. All right, so here we are in Uvalde, Texas which was named after the once governor of Spanish Texas, Juan de Ugalde. And just like the man himself, well, Uvalde can get a little wild. I mean, we are standing in the place where the hill country meets West Texas, meets South Texas, putting us right in the middle of a really good trip. Uvalde sits in a unique part of Texas and has some unique buildings to show for it. Its grandest, the Grand Opera House, dates back to 1891. The dragon atop, however, is a replica, as the original was all shot up during some Wild West target practice, which is a perfect story for a West Texas town like Uvalde. But more than just cowboys and outlaws, Uvalde has actually produced two of Texas's biggest political giants. And to learn about both, we're headed to the Briscoe Garner Museum. And while they do share a museum, both were very different men. Garner, AKA Cactus Jack, was a speaker of the US House and vice president under FDR. Briscoe, the governor of Texas in the 1970s. What they do share is that they were Texan to the core. You Valdi Texan. This is director Rochelle Runyon. Do you think these guys epitomize sort of the Texan politician, bigger than life kind of character? They do in very different ways. Garner was very kind of rough around the edges. This is how it is, whereas Briscoe was more on the shy side. Bigger than life, but definitely had distinct personalities. The museum now sits in Garner's old home, which he built for his wife, Eddie. Garner began his political career as the Uvalde County judge, and after a few decades, rose to the ranks of U.S. Speaker of the House. Oh, wait, back here, look. Garner formed his famous Board of Education, which was basically a private group where you got together, smoked cigars, and drank bourbon, during prohibition nonetheless. Oh man, he was a uh, you know good old Texas boy in every sense of the word. And because of that, Roosevelt chose Garner to be his vice president candidate in the 1932 election, and the rest is history. But according to Garner, the vice presidency wasn't all it's cracked up to be. So Garner's famous quote is that the vice presidency of the United States isn't worth a warm bucket of spit. See, he had tons of power as the Speaker of the House, but by the time he got to be vice president, he found himself without much to do or much power to do it. However, you look at his record, the man accomplished quite a bit. I mean, he was leading the country during the Great Depression, and right here, all the things he did under the New Deal legislation, the FDIC, the SEC, the Security Exchange Act, so maybe it wasn't worth a warm bucket of spit, but he was still able to make that spit do some work. Garner had his eye on the presidency and likely would have won, except for one small problem, the president. Here they are fighting about who's gonna run for president. And remember, it was kind of a gentleman's agreement that presidents were only supposed to seek two terms. Well, John Nance Garner was supposed to get the presidential nomination in 1940. However, Roosevelt, reneged on his deal, sought a third term. John Nance Garner got fed up with politics, went back to Texas, never to return again. 
Today, Garner's legacy lives on in many ways, including in the beautiful Garner State Park about 30 miles up the road, and in, well, um, me, I guess. Hey, all right, family photo. I know what you're wondering, am I related? And the answer is yes, but you probably already could tell from the good looks that run in the family. These brows. And the brows are very impressive. The brows need to come in on you. Yeah, my brows hadn't come in yet. Just get them big and wispy. <laughs> Speaking of Garner's influence, well, in the 1940s, a young Uvalde man came to seek Garner's advice and, frankly, to ask permission to run for the Texas legislature. That Texan was Dolph Briscoe, and luckily, Garner said yes. Man, if you grew up in Texas, Dolph Briscoe is definitely one of those names you grow up hearing, although you sort of lack specifics, and it, this museum does an awesome job sort of filling in the details. I mean, I've always known he was the governor, but, you know, you look at his record, it speaks for itself. He was a pretty awesome governor. He improved the farm-to-market road system we love to travel so much and made huge strides in education. Beyond being governor, Briscoe was a rancher and at one point owned more land than any other individual in Texas at about, oh, a thousand square miles. And his finest piece of clothing? Definitely this jacket. Hook him. He went to UT. I need one of these jackets. Although it seems I have to win the Distinguished Alumni Award, which is probably never gonna happen. Are you close? I mean, you host uh, a show. Yeah. You have to give away all your money. That's, That's right. What you gotta That's do. it. I gotta pick a new profession because day tripping ain't gonna earn me enough money <laughs> to, <laughs> to earn that jacket. You need to get into ranching. <laughs> That's the truth, yeah. Both Garner and Briscoe had a profound impact on our state, to which we are all indebted. And as time passes, well, we must never forget the hard work of those who passed this way before us. All right, so one last piece of Governor Briscoe's legacy, or maybe I should say several pieces, of art that is, because we're headed to the Briscoe Art and Antique Center, but also to the First State Bank of Uvalde. All right, so is it a bank or an art museum? Well, the truth is, it's a little bit of both. And that's all because this was Dolph Briscoe's bank and Governor Briscoe collected art. So he filled his entire bank with his art collection as a gift to the community of Uvalde. This is awesome. The building is kind of like a piece of art itself that's virtually unchanged since it was built in the 1960s. But the main attraction here, if you're not actually banking that is, is to enjoy the art on the walls, which includes names like Warren and Remington, and then one that's like, whoa, this is crazy. So here in the corner of this little waiting nook, they have two Rembrandts on the wall. I mean, you usually find Rembrandts in places like, oh, the Louvre, and it's here in the corner of a sitting area. This place has me so confused, and I like it. Just goes to show that you never know what you'll find out on the road. So, who in the car has had more yejas before? What's that? <laughs> See, there's a good question. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> more yejas? Really I have. Come on. No, you're, you're talking about the old yeah, you school, go. The, the old cuts. Yes, I'm talking about the deep cuts, man. Mollejas, de lengua, uh, you know. The ojo. It, <laughs> the ojo. Our older generation, they ate it all. Oh, they, they all, yeah, that's right. We're not talking modern Tex-Mex here. We're talking that real authentic Mexican cuisine. Like the kind that comes from a small window in an open air shack which is exactly the kind they're still cooking up at Live Oak Gorditas. This place is an institution that's been around for over 30 years, a place where owner Fernando Rodriguez continues to serve up some of the most incredible gorditas this side of the Rio Grande. And if you think I'm talking about whatever that fast food chain calls a gordita, think again. So this is like a, a corn bread, almost, right? No, Mexican corn bread? Oh, it's hollow like in the middle. Like a pita, right? Yeah, uh, you know, like a Mexican pita. Mexican pita. Or some ranchero. Something that's unlike anything else on the Mexican menu. 
and the ones here are made from scratch every day. I try to make at least 100. Wow, 100 a day, and sometimes you gotta make batch two, batch three. Yeah. Uh -huh. Man, yeah. I know you're meticulously weighing each ball there, right? Well, I, get, I got the feel. You got the, the feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, back, yeah. back and forth, uh -huh. kind of get yeah. that mixed. And when these babies fly off the griddle, there's nothing like it. it it's doing something that a flour tortilla can't, that a corn tortilla can't, or any, anything. That's, yeah. that's totally yeah. different. A lot of people like them with just butter. Oh. But then we come to the stuffing, which can be any number of items. Brisket, chicken, carne guisada, chicharrones, and mollejas, which are... It's a gland. A gland. Thymus gland. The, the thymus gland. You know, I was in the mood for cow thymus glands this morning when I woke up. They have a, a crunchy and a chicharron flavor. Thymus gland. Oh, delicious. Some of my favorite things, fat and salt. I love it. <laughs> You'll live to be a thousand years old. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fountain of youth. For Fernando, it might be, as he shows no signs of slowing down. But time for the full meal. All right, so here we go. I got a mollejas gordita and a ranchera gordita. All right, some deep fried thymus. That's awesome. Anybody on the planet would just eat it and go, wow, that's a delicious thing. You hand it and say, hey, eat this deep fried thymus gland. They might have a little, a little bit hesitation. of apprehension. But don't think about it, just eat it, it's delicious. I think all those authentic Mexican joints know the secret. Thymus gland's where it's at, that's good. Of course, there are other options for the less adventurous eaters, but trust me on the mollejas. Mm. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Time to get out of town for a bit. While Garner State Park and the Rio Frio aren't far up the road, we're headed to the even closer and lesser known New Oasis River and a place called Park Chalk Bluff. Wow, that is gorgeous. Man, look at that. You know what they call that big rock right there? The Chalk Bluff. Now you're chalking. Now we're now chalking. You're chalking. Yeah, you're chalking. This is awesome. Hey, look at these big towering bluffs. There's very few places you can see these kind of bluffs in Texas over a river. I mean, it kind of reminds me of Big Bend or the Devil's River. What a little oasis, right? I mean, you're out here in the dry, scrubby land. You got all the cactus, you got all the mesquites, and then there's this blue river going right through the middle of it. Thank you, Lord, for making Texas so beautiful. All right, John Mark, you gotta do it. Anytime you're by a river, rock skipping contest. Me versus you versus him, versus him, versus him. Not me versus all y'all, it's every man for himself. On a hot summer's day, Chalk Bluff can be packed, but in the winter, we got it all to ourselves, save for some of the permanent residents. That's hilarious. <laughs> Watch this. We're gonna put it on the hat. <laughs> Did he get it? Did he get it? Watch this, John Mark. We're gonna put it on the lens. <laughs> I love this, it's like a nature park and a wildlife safari all in one. What a strange, yet beautiful place. So just a little further down the road is another spot with animals. Over 60 free roaming species inside of the Ox Ranch. And while many of them are here for hunting, well, we're only here to hunt one thing, tanks. 
This ranch is home to drivetanks.com, a place where you can drive and shoot real tanks and artillery. When we started this, we collected tanks, and we yeah. wanted to collect some tanks, some guns with our licensing, and then we made them live. Uh, we were like, <laughs> who wouldn't want to come and do this? So sure. we're like, oh, we got to see if we can make it available to the public. And we're the only place in the world that does this, you know? <laughs> that's so awesome. that shoots actual full power loads out of real tanks. Real tanks. Of course, a place like this would be in Texas, but it's about much more than just blowing stuff up. You guys are, are true history buffs and you're doing something special preserving these things. Yeah, that's preserving preserving this yeah. military history. And we, we want to make sure we continue honoring those guys and that whole era. That's awesome. Todd and his crew are former military, and as of filming, they had about 14 tracked vehicles, along with a small country's worth of machine guns, some of which are extremely old and extremely rare. They've literally saved many of their tanks from becoming rusted out scrap buckets of tetanus, including this Sherman tank, which is regarded as the best Sherman left in the world. And we're gonna get to drive it. But while they're firing it up, well, they asked me if I wanted to shoot a flamethrower. And the answer to that question is always, yes, I do. Fire away. Oh, oh. someone get the s'mores. <laughs> Man. And with that, I think it's tank time. I'm about to drive a Sherman tank. Yes, you are. Now, quick question. Have you driven a manual before? I, I have. Okay, so it's Never good. Never a manual tank. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to drive kind of like a sports car, except it weighs about, you know, 35 tons. Are there, are there places I can't step on this thing? It's a tank, you won't break it. Now my instructor Spencer actually served on an army tank crew. So I figure there's no better person to learn from than this guy. Oh, all right. This thing is what, uh, 70 years old almost? 75 years old now. So yeah, I hate for this to be its final day on earth. <laughs> right. <laughs> talking well, about these bad boys. Yeah, so these sticks, basically what you have to look at is you're controlling a set of brakes. Okay. Right? Left stick controls left track. Oh wow, okay. Right stick controls right track. So if you're ready to start up. I'm ready. There you oh, go. Oh, I hear that. Let him go. There you go. You hear that? Away we go. Very slowly. I'm trying not to crash this thing in the first 10 feet, okay? Oh, there we go. Hey! I'm gonna start telling you to guide off to the right, and we're gonna head down that big hill. Yeah! Just make sure you give her plenty there of gas. Oh, oh it didn't back. happen. You so close and I stalled out. Come on. There you go, gas, gas, gas. Straight on, bring your RPMs up. Go. Clutch in, pull her back, quick. There you go, off of it. There you go. <laughs> All right, there it is. This ain't easy, and I'm not even being shot at. All right, let her go. Now we're going to head into the river. Yep, you heard that right. The river. <laughs> no way. You know, I'm used to floating down river in a tube, but never forging up river in a tank. We're not done yet. I mentioned these were live fire capable. So we're gonna shoot a bullet, a very big bullet. So we're gonna send this thing 200 yards downrange into that car. At a high velocity. Oh yeah, all right. <laughs> a 76 millimeter armor penetrating round flying at like a million miles an hour into that old car. Hold on to your hats, trippers. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, I think so. Okay. 
Here we oh. go. All right. You're clear to fire. Three, two, one, fire in the hole! Wow! <laughs> Let's see that again. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Oh, that's great. It is, isn't it? Oh, how'd we do? Oh, yeah, we hit it. Enemy destroyed. We hit it, went right through the car into the bank, and it was a solid. Oh, one. yeah. <laughs> Bam, big gun go boom. <laughs> For those of us that never had the privilege of serving, this is a once in a lifetime sort of day trip. And thank you to the generations of soldiers that have rolled tanks straight into the line of fire to protect our freedoms. Freedoms like the one I'm enjoying right now. Oh my gosh, y'all realize what we just did? Kind of empowering. I mean, you can see why it is fun to be a soldier. Now, scary to go into battle, yes, but man, they get some pretty awesome toys. How hot was it standing behind that flamethrower? Man, why do we have home ovens when we could have backyard flamethrowers? I was thinking we, we forgot the s'mores totally when you were working that flamethrower. <laughs> Yeah, it might have tasted a bit like jet fuel. But funny enough, I know a place that actually sells jet fuel and food together. And it just so happens to be the place we're headed for dinner. This is Garner Field Airport, once an active military training facility. It is now a great small town airport. And among the private planes and hangars, well, the tastiest spot on the airstrip is definitely Hangar 6. The interior harkens back to the diner days of America, with the art on the walls, honoring its past days training World War II pilots. And the best show is still the one outside. Where else in Texas can you get a front row seat with a beer and a burger watching <laughs> planes take off, you yeah. know? This is Hangar 6 team member Al Ortiz. We wanted to give an ode to that historical context and put Hangar 6 on here, and Hangar 6's name is a derivative of uh, where the first operations were in San Antonio, which was the sixth hangar out of Windburn Field. And then they transitioned over to Uvalde, and it's a, it's, it's a rich history that we wanted to celebrate. That's so. cool. And I look in the menu items, a lot of them are named after, like, you know, the Stearman, the PP-1 right. Mustang, Exactly. Like yeah, my favorite is the Cuban Missile. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, where in Uvalde, Texas, are you going to find a Cuban sandwich? You know? Sure. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the only spot you can find items quite like these in Uvalde especially when it comes to the burgers. So do you guys have people fly in just for the burger? Actually, we do, yeah. Some people come in, and uh -huh. they don't realize that there's a restaurant here right at the airport when they get off the jet, and uh, they'll come back just for the food. Yeah. Uh, and actually, actually, we have a, a $100 deal, basically, where they come in, they gas up for $100, they come in and get a free burger, so. Not bad. Yeah, exactly, yeah. $100 burger, so. <laughs> Let's see if the burger is really worth 100 bucks. And let's smother that bad boy in some chili. Boom, check that out. I love chili burgers, because they get all over your face and your shirt. Uh-huh. If the burger wasn't greasy enough, my fingers are practically slipping off of this bun because it's so buttered. <laughs> That's good, though. It's like when you can't choose between a burger or a bowl of chili, just put the chili on the burger. Come on, man. Sprinkle some Fritos on there. That's a Texified combination, if I ever saw one. I gotta say, I dig this like flying culture. Hop in your private plane and you can hop anywhere in the country. That would really blow the doors off of where we can get in a day for a day trip. A food like this, enough to make me want to buy my own plane. Mm. You know, there's something about Texas towns that makes anything feel possible. You wanna be governor or vice president, maybe you wanna restore tanks and blow stuff up, no problem. You want to eat like a king, see the beauty of nature, and feed a camel? Sure. But if you want to do all those things in one place, well, then you only got one place to go, and that's Uvalde. Legendary status achieved. You know, that flamethrower really made me crave some s'mores. And I'm in luck. Oh, yes. Finishing the day with a s'mores milkshake. So I will see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Good.
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment. Let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas-made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigos.